We're going to begin with a, uh, an agenda item one, San Diego County Fire Roadside Vegetation Management uh, for increased wildfire prevention uh, in the unincorporated areas of San Diego County. Uh, after we hear from a staff presentation, we'll see if any board members have initial comments they make, then we'll go to public speakers. I'll remind members of the public who wish to speak on this item that non-agendized public communication has concluded for the day. Uh, any speakers who wish to speak about roadside vegetation management, uh, we welcome you and uh, we will uh, we'll enjoy your, your comments on roadside vegetation management, but we need to keep our comments to the agenda items before us today. Uh, with that, let me turn it over to uh, staff for a uh, presentation. Thank you, Chair Fletcher and members of the board. In March of this year, the Board of Supervisors requested staff return with options to further increase vegetation management along county roads. The board also directed the CAO to explore options for aligning sections of the county code to allow for 20 feet of clearance. In response, county fires developed three option for the board, options for the board's consideration this morning. Today, I'm joined by Jeff Monita from the county's Department of Public Works and County Fire Chief and Cal Fire Unit Chief Tony Meacham, and they'll provide an update on the proposed actions aimed at increasing community resilience. Completing roadside vegetation management projects decreases the likelihood of entrapment, loss of life, and loss of property for residents of San Diego County who live in wildfire prone areas. I now turn the presentation over to Chief Tony Meacham, who will provide details of the three options for expanded vegetation management program for your board to consider. Tony. Thank you, Holly. It is hard to overstate the wildfire risk in San Diego County. The map shows the level of fire hazard severity across our region. You can see how much of our county is covered with bright red, which indicates the highest fire risk. Overall, 79% of unincorporated San Diego County is considered high or very high hazard fire severity. 41% of the unincorporated area has burned in wildfires since the year 2000. As you know, San Diego County has a long history of devastating wildfires. Over the past de decade, tens of thousands of residents have had, their had, have had to leave their homes in response to these incidents for their safety. Unfortunately, we continue to see an increase in the frequency and intensity of these wildfires. And already this year, we have seen wildfires that require evacuations. <clears throat> This year's wildfire outlook predicts an above normal level of activity through at least October. This is influenced by minimal rainfall and live fuel moistures being at historically low levels. Because of the risk presented in our county, we must always be ready to evacuate. This means focusing on the readiness of our nearly 2,000 miles of roadways. Many of our key evacuation corridors cross through the highest fire risk areas in our county. If not maintained, these roads could be overrun by fire because of vegetation. If this were to happen during evacuations, we could see life-threatening situations such as entrapments. As the scale and scope of wildfire continues to increase, it is even more important to prepare our roadways and our communities for wildfires. Our partners at the Department of Public Works have always put safety first and over the last few years, County Fire and DPW have increased this focus. At this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Jeff Medina, Director of Public Works. Thank you, Chief Meacham. Based on board direction for County Fire to look at increasing vegetation management along county maintained public roads for public safety reasons, the Department of Public Works will work with County Fire to reduce vegetation in areas of high, and very high fire severity in the unincorporated communities. Public Works currently conducts a thorough environmental review before we perform any mowing and vegetation removal in new areas. In light of the board direction this year, Public Works has increased its ability to expand roadside mowing from 500 to 800 miles. The locations for vegetation management will be determined by county fire. County Fire will identify this list of key evacuation routes, and then the Public Works Environmental Services Unit staff will conduct a thorough environmental review of those locations, including evaluating them for sensitive habitat. Public Works will identify sensitive habitat and species to be avoided, flag them in the field, and have biologists on site to monitor the work. I will now turn the presentation back to Chief Meacham. Thank you, Jeff. Since 2019, County Fire has completed numerous fuel projects throughout the county. We have treated more than 500 acres of fuel. We have also doubled the number of defensible space inspections, reducing the risk around homes. 
County Fire also works closely with our state partners at Caltrans. We collaborate in ways to increase vegetation management along state highways and serve as one of Caltrans District 11 fire prevention collaborative stakeholders. County Fire has also worked with nearly a dozen communities to incorporate evacuation planning into their community wildfire protection plans. These efforts have identified key evacuation corridors in these communities that could benefit from additional roadside vegetation management. These steps all are part of our cohesive fire strategy. We take a holistic approach to preventing wildfire now to reduce the loss of property and lives later. To accomplish this mission, County Fire has developed three programmatic options for building a roadside vegetation management program. I will provide a summary of each of these options for your consideration. Each option would include an environmental review to address expanded clearing areas. The review consists of three phases. First is an initial review of roads proposed for vegetation management that identifies sensitive habitats and species to be avoided. Two, preparation of an environmental document that describes those roads, lists all avoidance measures, and makes environmental findings. And three, biological monitoring work in sensitive areas identified in phase one. Under option one, County Fire will enhance our defensible space inspections program by adding a roadside vegetation management review during each visit to a property. This will help our residents to better prepare and protect from wildfires. Public Works will continue to main 800 miles of roadway each year, and County Fire will continue its collaboration with county departments, Caltrans, independent fire districts, and communities to identify and manage vegetation along key evacuation corridors. Under this option, we would add one full-time equivalent in County Fire and one half full-time equivalent in Public Works in a contracted fire captain position in County Fire. Under option two, County Fire will take a focused approach selecting four existing communities on which to concentrate our efforts. We will identify high priority evacuation corridors or single entry and exit points. We will then strengthen those evacuation options through community engagement and roadside vegetation work. We will also provide a defensible space inspection on every parcel for a total of 26,000 inspections per year. This will include the added roadside vegetation review. And Public Works will expand its operations and maintain vegetation along 900 miles per year. This option would add three and a half full-time equivalents in county fire and two and a half positions in Public Works, along with two contracted fire captains and two contracted inspectors. The estimated cost for implementation is $1.78 million annually. Option three, under this option, County Fire will take a countywide approach to roadside vegetation management. We will create a new team that focuses on this specific mission, visiting each community in the county on a three-year cycle. We will increase and complete 34,000 defensible space inspections per year, and Public Works will maintain vegetation along a total of 1,000 miles per year. This option would add five and a half full-time equivalents, three in county fire and two and a half in public works. One contracted battalion chief, two fire captains, and five inspectors. The estimated cost for implementation of this option is $2.6 million. In response to the board's direction, county fire has also begun working with independent fire protection districts to review the county's defensible space ordinance. This ordinance requires that property owners and residents maintain a break in vegetation between their homes, the wildland urban interface, and it also requires a buffer in vegetation along roads. Several fire protection districts throughout the county have adopted this ordinance to apply to their jurisdictions. County Fire is working to modernize the de defensible space ordinance to reflect input from our cooperators, agencies, and changes in state fire regulations. I will now turn the presentation back to Holly. Today's recommendations are to direct the Chief Administrative Officer to continue stakeholder outreach and return to the Board within 90 days with a proposal to amend the Defensible Space Ordinance. In addition, we are seeking the Board's direction this morning on which vegetation management program option should be pursued. We recommend a return to your Board within 90 days when we will identify a funding source and provide a timeline for implementing the program. 
Chair Fletcher, this concludes our presentation subject to your board's questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Holly, and thank you, Chief Meacham. I know uh, we've had a number of conversations about the regional fire preparedness, including with other stakeholders, and I, I appreciate the work done on this. I think this is an important step. We'll, the board will discuss and decide which option to take, but I think we all take very seriously the increased danger of wildfires uh, brought about by climate change, drought, weather patterns, uh, all, of, all of the issues we face and, and how severe an issue this is. Uh, before we go to public speakers, I believe this item was initiated in March uh, by Supervisors Desmond and Anderson, and I appreciate their uh, effort bringing that forward. I want to ask them if they'd like to make initial comments or if you'd prefer to wait till after the public speaker. Okay, so we'll go to the public speakers and when we come back, we'll go to uh, Supervisor Desmond and then my colleagues. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We have one request to speak by phone. Also know for the record that we, we received one e-comment on this item in favor. And if you could please identify the caller and you'll have two minutes to address the board. We'll ask you to please state your name for the audio record. You'll need to press star six to unmute your line. Thank you. Caller 2750. Good morning, uh, Chair Fletcher, members of the board, Dan Silver, Endangered Habitats League. Our concern is whether the program is on the right track. The options differ from, differ from each other in size, but do not tell you whether the treatments themselves are good or bad. Before making the program bigger, first make sure it, it is effective. Similar to house hardening, road hardening is very important, as wildfires often start at the road edge and then spread. Of course, access and staging improvements are a separate matter. My main concern here is what is exactly meant by, quote, clearing? If you just clear vegetation, as described in the staff report, this will inevitably produce highly flammable weeds and grasses that will rapidly carry fire into adjacent wildlands and go out of control. In contrast, there are several ways that road edge edges can be effectively hardened. These include actual hardscape like gravel, continual maintenance so that you don't have the flammable weeds and grasses, flame retardants, and importantly, revegetation with relatively inflammable native shrubs. But improper treatments can do more harm than good. So what exactly is being done on the ground? Are your treatments having the unintended consequence of creating 800 miles of flammable fire alleys? And why 20 feet instead of 10, which is the standard? So I suggest you go no further until proper due diligence is done trust me, is not a good enough answer. You need documentation of these treatments over time to understand them. As a related matter, we ask you to look into sophisticated programs of visual monitoring of roadsides under high wind conditions, as is occurring in Orange County under its Fire Watch program. Is Fire Watch occurring in San Diego? And if not, why? Thank you very much. That concludes public comment on this item, Chair Fletcher. Thank you. Uh, thank you to our public speakers. I've got a number of questions. Let me go first to, uh, to my colleagues. We'll start with Supervisor Desmond, and then we'll see go to uh, Supervisor Vargas. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Appreciate uh, the opportunity here, and I, I want to thank uh, Supervisor Anderson uh, for partnering with me on this very important item, uh, and also want to thank our fire and public works and, and uh, emergency operations uh, for the staff for the uh, presentation. You know, as Chief Meacham said, 79% of our county falls in the high to very high uh, ha fire hazard uh, uh, zones. And wildfires are the biggest threat, we, one of the biggest threats that we face uh, uh, here in uh, Southern California. So I think we need to do all we can to mitigate the risks and the liability uh, of wildfires. So many of our roads run the risk of burning over in a wildfire or, or during an evacuation. And I think we should be clearing the uh, vegetation to the maximum extent possible uh, with the appropriate environmental review and clearance, and um, I'm going to make a motion, but I, I, I would like to add that possibly um, when you come back in 90 days, we can have some of the definitions Mr. Silver had asked for uh, concerning uh, what defines clearing, hardscaping, and uh, revegetation options. But I've heard from many community leaders across the dis my district, from Valley Center, Warner Springs, you know, throughout the county uh, uh, that evacuation is a real concern during a wildfire. And we've seen all the hor horrific uh, pictures from Paradise and different parts of, San of the uh, state of California uh, for people trying to evacuate areas and uh, clearing the roadways is gonna be an important part of that. So 
Option number three uh, maintains 1,000 lane miles of county roads annually, res will resort, uh, result in 34,000 defensible space inspections or uh, investigations to properties and roads, uh, and visit communities every three years. I wish we could do it every year, but every three years is uh, kind of the best out of option three. And a safe and well-maintained infrastructure is, core, is a core responsibility of government. So I'd urge my colleagues to support this extensive fire hardening program uh, to uh, protect and do all that we can with option three uh, to prevent the wildfires or to, pre to protect our communities during wildfires. So I'd like to move staff's recommendation with option three for roadside vegetation management and also to come back with within that 90 days with more defined uh, clarifications uh, that Mr. Silver had asked for. That's my motion. All right, we have a motion. Uh, let me go to uh, Vice Chair Vargas. Uh, thank you, and thank you, uh, Supervisor Desmond, for that recommendation. I was actually going to ask about option three because I think it's extremely important that it actually looks at uh, North and South County, and although I understand that if you look at the, if you look at the severity zones, uh, the North County obviously has a higher propensity, but I want to make sure that we don't forget about South County. And so in the plan that we're going to be receiving from all of you, if we can have a timeline of what it will look like as we're going to be, um, you know, how, how we're going to be able to to do this work to ensure um, safety in our community. So I'm happy to second that motion and, and support this because I think that it's extremely important. We cannot invest enough um, on this. So thank you for that. Thank you, Vice Chair. Supervisor Lawson Reamer. Um, well, thank you very much. I, I think, first of all, I just want to reiterate that, that the safety of our constituents and homes and property is paramount. And I am committed to investing in fire protection and, uh, protection and the fire hardening of our communities and roadsides. Um, I do have a couple comments and concerns um, I'm sort of about the formulation of this item. Uh, first of all, you know, I remain concerned about vegetation management and fuel reduction as sort of an overall paradigm for how we think about understanding our natural environment and our interactions with it and for guiding our approach to uh, fire uh, management in the wildland urban interface. Um, I think more broadly, we need to link our discussion of the need for these public investments in fire prevention and mitigation with our discussion regarding the future of residential growth in our region. Uh, the dangerous development patterns that we're now being asked to mitigate for, that we're asking our constituents to subsidize with general funds, are the products of decades of plant bad planning and prior boards that incentivize the wrong kind of growth, flight, disinvestment in our urban core, disinvesting in urban communities, sprawling dangerous growth in obviously manifestly high fire zones. These fire risks are inadequately funded liabilities of development in the backcountry with which we are now saddled as taxpayers. So the residents in these fi high fire severity areas are our community members and families that are in danger, and we have a paramount responsibility to protect them as best as we can, but we should not and must not continue to keep incentivizing additional residential development that puts more and more families in danger. We will have to deal with this problem in perpetuity that we've made for ourselves, but we don't need to continue to make this problem deeper. We need to reduce future development in high and very high fire zones so that we reduce the need to mitigate against fire risk in these fire zones. So I will be supporting this measure today um, with my colleagues, but I do think it's really important that we uh, recognize this as an emergency measure that needs to be taken to mitigate against past poor decisions by previous boards. And our responsibility is to ensure that we don't make additional bad decisions that increase the number of families and number of communities at risk of fire in San Diego County. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Lawson Reamer. I, I appreciate Chief Meacham and, uh, and Holly Porter, all of your work in bringing this forward. Um, obviously, vegetation management is a piece of a broader effort, and as a region, we've invested significantly uh, to be prepared to meet the, uh, the, the, the realities that, that we face today. Um, but I think we have to always explore and ask what else we could do, what more we could do, uh, how could we be better prepared. The, the western U.S. in particular is seeing the real impacts of climate change with record-breaking heats uh, and record-breaking numbers of fires uh, triggered with drought and lightning strikes and everything of the sort. Uh, the reality is smaller wildfires just don't even get that much attention. And just in the past few weeks, uh, our CAL FIRE team and regional agencies have responded to multiple uh, wildfires that uh, on the scope of severity and what we see uh, don't seem that severe. But our board 
pays attention and cares and, and wants to uh, explore everything we can do. And I, I think this is a, a good, good step forward. I, I also would su be supporting option three um, as we move forward to do everything that we can. Uh, but we also want to take into account some of the concerns that have been raised and issues that have, have, been, have been done to make sure we are, we are sharing um, you know, with the public. And, today, and I've got a couple of just quick questions to get a little clarity for us uh, that will guide us as we move forward in the 90 days. We know if we remove chaparral, it can often be replaced by non-native grasslands and weeds, uh, which are also extremely flammable. And so what is our plan to ensure that the roadside hardening um, is maintained and occurs uh, rather than just replacing one flammable uh, plant with another? Uh, thank you, Chair Fletcher. So one thing I want to clarify is that our fuel brakes specific to this issue are intended to protect evacuation corridors. So when we look at the clearance, uh, each project is unique, but what we're trying to do is reduce the fuel loading in and around the, the roadways to reduce the intensity of fire. And, and that can have a variety of treatments. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean clear cutting, it can mean thinning, it can be reducing, it can be just removing the dead component and leaving the uh, live component. Certainly the replacement or the conversion from, from a brush or a chaparral to a grass is, is concerning. And I think it is an, it's an issue that we need to further address. And what we're talking about here is going up to 20 feet. So I would defer also back to Jeff on what are the options in terms of gravel or um, you, you know, kind of more of a, of a scraping type of a grading um, assessment. And because we're gonna focus on the communities that are at highest risk, most of them um, lack secondary egress, I think these high priority roads, probably the first 30 or 40 that we select, are something that we're gonna have to come back and look at, at annually because of the criticality of why we're doing the work um, in the first place. Please. Supervisor, for, for Public Works, we are limited in our, our budget with maintaining our roadway segments. However, we will evaluate um, our options as we conduct our maintenance. Currently, we're conducting 500 road miles, lane miles of maintenance. And right now, we're able to manage that uh, within the 10 feet uh, from the edge of roadway. But if there are any opportunities where we can manage um, or evaluate conditions and it seems feasible, then that would be something we would consider. Got it. I think when we come back in 90 days, it'd be good, you know, if we have a little more, just as you're working out the plans, clarity on the utilization of gravel, if we're gonna do herbicides, frequency, just, you know, being very transparent with kind of the overall approach, um, I think I think would be important. Chief, you mentioned something interesting, that this is designed to protect our evacuation routes, uh, but how often do you see instances of um, ignition to roadside vegetation being the originating source? Obviously, the intents to protect evacuation routes, but is that a, it seems like an issue that comes up. I just don't know the frequency. Supervisor, I don't have the exact figures in front of me. I can tell you approximately 90% of all fires are, are human cause, and of those in San Diego, uh, vehicles are a significant so cause of gonna... fires, and when, when we'll come back to you with that information. Yeah. And there's multiple ways that we can treat. We're, we're talking again today about evacuations, but what goes hand in hand with that is also reducing uh, the risk of addictions. Uh, we have worked on uh, alternate treatments of fire retardants and gels. We want to fully understand uh, the environmental impacts. We did a test project both with DPW and Caltrans um, last year. So I think there's further things we need to look at and focus on all, not just protecting the evacuation corridors, but also focusing on the ignition data and what we can do along those kind of uh, high risk areas where we do see um, ignitions from vehicles. Yeah, it just seems like it's a dual purpose, right? We're both protecting the evacuation routes, but it, some number of wildfires seem, seem to originate from the kind of vehicle, grassland, roadside, um, type situations, so I think it can do both. So, good one, please support this item. Uh, appreciate the work, excited to see it come back. We've got a motion by Supervisor Desmond. Uh, let me go to uh, Supervisor Anderson uh, before we uh, clarify our motion and, and vote. Supervisor Anderson. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank Supervisor Desmond for his leadership on this. Uh, I've lived in my home for the 30 years. Uh, I bought it and within the first two months I had to evacuate. That was the first time I evacuated, 33 years ago. Uh, we have these come up all the time. Yes, cars are partially the problem, but we've also had natural lightning strikes that have created huge fires. And I think one of the things that uh, is challenging is that we have rolling brush. And some of that rolling brush, uh, if not cleared, builds up. And then we have these amazing fires that, that uh, move rapidly at high heat uh, back 
uh, during the Witch Creek fire. Uh, the the uh, president came out uh, down the street from my house with the governor to tour the devastation. And I was standing there with my kids because everyone wants to see the president, no matter who that president is. And uh, there was a sign that had melted, but the fire had moved so rapidly that the uh, four by four was barely noticed. But I saw little pools of metal on the bottom. And it was the sign that melted because of the intensity of the heat. You know, these are very, very scary times. Fires don't understand borders or recognize city borders. We saw how the fire made it into the city, almost down to the water. And uh, I know that a lot of people believe that it's tied to housing out there. But if you think about a canary in a coal mine, it's those homes that notify fire uh, uh, enforcement, firefighters, early before the flames get too great. So I, I think it's important not to blame residents for naturally causing fires. We saw even in the Cleveland Act, National Forest uh, where we've had fires and nobody was around it and nobody had anything to do with it. So I, I really appreciate the board moving forward, making our county more safe uh, with this maneuver. And, and uh, again, thank you, Supervisor Desmond, for bringing this up and bringing it to our attention. Thank you. So with that, we have a motion by Supervisor Desmond, seconded by Vice Chair Vargas to approve uh, item three, option three in the recommendation with the understanding when it comes back, uh, we'll have some greater clarity around definitions around clearing, uh, hardscaping, vegetation management per Supervisor Desmond's direction and provide Vice Chair Vargas some kind of timeline around geographic areas and, and implementation protocols so we can see. Uh, with that, not seeing any additional requests to uh, speak, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Chair Fletcher, that motion passes unanimously with all supervisors being present and voting aye. 